The MPAD is one of the foot-sized devices in the UbiComp environment. The purpose of the MPAD project was to build a device which could create the illusion of having a portable wireless tablet computer containing all the computational power of a workstation. For this illusion to become reality, CSL chose to separate the computational engine from the portable display device. The reason behind this is evident. Separating the engine from the display device means tremendous gains in the power to weight ratio. It also enables the computationally intensive tasks to match the speeds of today's powerful workstations instead of settling for what is currently available in low power portable devices. This system consists of three key hardware components. The MPAD, a portable tablet computer, the radio base station, which bridges the wireless and wired networks, and the near-field radio, which provides the wireless communication. Highlighting the input-output capabilities of the MPAD are a 1 megabit per second tether, a built-in 9600 bit per second infrared interface, a 250 kilobit per second radio port, a tethered stylus with microphone, a built-in speaker, one PCMCIA slot, an RS-232 port, and a keyboard port. Linking the radio network with the rest of the building are the base stations. Each base station has an Ethernet port, a 250 kilobit per second radio port, and two MPAD battery charging tether ports. The near-field radios are the wireless data link. Each radio operates at 5 megahertz and has cells with a 3 to 4 meter radius. The result is office-sized radio cells with very well-defined cell boundaries. The heart of the MPAD software architecture is a split X server. The protocol portions of the server run on a workstation, while the graphics engine runs on the MPAD. Communication between the two halves of the X server takes place using TCP IP streams. Let's trace the path of a pen event from the MPAD to the corresponding application. The pen event goes into a TCP stream where it is converted to an IP packet. This packet is then sent over the radio under the control of a media access protocol layer to ensure delivery at the receiving radio base station. The base station receives the packet and routes it to the Ethernet, bound for the host side of the X server. The host X server processes the event and notifies the client software. The client software responds to the event by notifying the X server. Packets then travel in the reverse direction from the client to the X server, over the Ethernet to the base station, out the radio, and finally back into the MPAD radio. What happens when an MPAD moves out of range of one radio cell and into another? The radio base station simply adjusts the routing information so that communication with the MPAD is continued under the new base station. The MPAD's IP address stays the same, allowing the existing connections to remain intact. This enables the MPAD to travel from cell to cell without any interruptions in its communication path. 